Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thanks for joining us once again on this episode of Engine Room. I'm joined again by uh, Jacob Coach Gallup, our market analyst intern. Jacob, happy Friday to you, man. Happy Friday, Dylan. Great to be here. So maybe you're listening to us in audio form. Maybe you're watching us on YouTube. We want to encourage you to go check out our YouTube channel, Token Metrics. We are, what is it now? 13,000 shy? Yeah, 13, 14,000 shy of 100,000 subscribers. So come on, guys, get us to that six-figure mark. Hit subscribe. Get, let's, let's, uh, let's put up some good numbers. It begins with 100,000. But in the meantime, yep. we're going to talk a little bit about what the market's been doing this week. Jacob, why don't you share your screen? And uh, for those listening on headphones, we'll do our best to make it audio friendly. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So now I got my screen up. This is my trading view. Um, can you see it? For sure. Yeah. Okay. So there's a bunch of blue lines. It's probably scary, but these are just kind of uh, resistance and support lines that I've that I've drawn over the past few months. You can see, for example, um, we have some lines. This line right here correlates with the bottom. That's That was at 1720. I drew this based off of a bottom we saw in June. I drew that same resist, the same support line before it hit this support in July when it was in around July 14th. When it was trading around 2000, I drew that 1720 support line and it hit that and bounced right off of that in July 19th. So you can see these historical resistance and supports based off previous price action is key. Um, so let's let's go into the, the past month of August. Sure. I drew I put this this rectangle here to kind of just show the 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 um, the box or the 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 top and bottom we've been trading in over the past three weeks, you can see it's been pretty much sideways. Um, and we're still in, we're, we're still in that um, about the same. I want to, I, I, I do want to talk about it because about last week, there was a huge um, kind of craze over the golden cross that Bitcoin was going to hit the golden cross. And that's when the 50 day moving average crosses the 200 day moving average. You can see that actually happened. Let me zoom in right here. So we have the yellow line is the 50 day moving average and the green line is the 200 day moving average. You can see on July 24th, it crossed the 50 day went above the 200 day. And it's been, that's really once it started taking off, you can see if I zoom out, it's around here, July 24th. And from July 24th, when it was about 2000 up to August 14, so 20 days, it went from 2000, about 2100 to now 3300. And I was just looking at this. You can see right, right here, if I zoom in on August 27th, which is today, looks like the move, the, the 50 day moving average might be crossing the 200 day moving average again, which is called the death cross when the 50 day goes outside of the 200 day. And that's bearish price action that leads to bearish movements. Um, so that's something to look out for. Uh, right now, what I'm going to say is that no one knows what the hell is going on. If you look at any coin telegraph or any any market crypto news, everyone's saying Bitcoin is either going for right now, it's sitting at what 48,000, it's either going back down to around 32,000 or up to 100,000. That's literally the headlines. Bitcoin's either going down or up. And I mean, that's that's kind of what's hard about it is predicting where it's going to go. So I think there's a lot of factors that are in play. So we have both the cyclical action of uh, legacy stocks. So usually in September and October, that's when the market equity market tends to crash. We've seen over the past year, the uh, crypto market has been following the same cyclical action as the equity markets. So that's something to look out for really in September around Labor Day. We really want to be looking at the crypto market, see whether it's actually going to start crashing then, or if it doesn't, then that's going to tell us that it's going to go higher. Um, also, there's a lot of political stuff going on in the world with Afghanistan, the Fed saying that they're going to stop printing with the COVID Delta variant rampaging throughout the South and going to start once it becomes fall and winter. It's going to, the case they're going to start ticking up again. So there, there's a lot of unknowns going around and the, either the crypto market or the legacy market never likes un, uncertainty. So it's something to look out for. I'd say, look at these charts, 
uh, what, what stay, stay following us because we're going to be following these charts. We're going to be following price action. We're going to be following market news through all of this. So this is the be your best source to get these news and really understand what's going on. But for that, I'm going to say either Ethereum and Bitcoin, it's either going to go up or down. And that's what I'm going to look at. <laughs> My favorite bit of, of trading wisdom is that up or down, the chart will continue to move to the right. Yep, exactly. Well, let's change gears to talk a little bit about Jack Dorsey, who is the CEO of Twitter, but he is also the CEO of Square. I have a lot to say about Jack Dorsey, but we're going to get to that in a minute because uh, he's in the news right now because he's basically throwing his hat into the ring on developing a decentralized exchange. It's called TBD, literally mm -hmm. to be determined. So who knows what yeah. his specific plans are here, but all of this really seems to underscore some of my criticisms that I've held about this guy for a long time. Jack, I admire you. You're uh, an amazing entrepreneur. You've done incredibly well for yourself. You're doing too much. Uh, if, if you're building a Bitcoin exchange, it means you're not solving problems that Twitter has had for many years around abuse and misinformation. So uh, I think it's pretty exciting that an entrepreneur that, has, that carries as much weight as Jack Dorsey does, I think it's exciting for him to be involved in crypto. But it's, it is so obvious to me that he does not need to be involved. I think he needs to put out the fire at his other house before he builds a brand new house next door, if that makes any sense. What, what do you yeah. think, Jacob? Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's one major problem of currently decentralized social media. There, there's, a, there's a few out there. And their biggest problem is that since it's unmoderated, it's decentralized, no one controls what's being said. There's a lot of hate groups, there's a lot of kind of racial racial slurs or any a lot of hate on that. And since they can't moderate it, that leads to a lot of problems and a lot of people not wanting to adopt or use these social media because they don't want to see hate. And that's honestly a problem with Twitter right now. There it's 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 an it's an uh kind of an argument or a problem it's uh, it's trying to moderate it not not have hate speech but also to respect the freedom of speech so right now twitter's having that problem and they're centralized have nothing to do with the crypto or the blockchain and if he jack's trying to move towards decentralized move towards crypto projects i just if he can't even control a centralized project how can he control a decentralized project is yeah, my thought. Amen to that. Amen to that. So Jack, we're watching you and, and we're not the only ones. Uh, figure it out, baby. Figure, figure it out. <laughs> uh, but let's move right along. Let's talk a little bit about uh, a little bit of internal company stuff. Uh, you guys should know if you like what we do, if you like these videos, if you like our content, we are hiring writers. So right now on the uh, Token Metrics LinkedIn page, we have two different job listings. The first is for a staff writer, and the second is for a cryptocurrency writer intern. If you want to work with me and Jacob and you want to make cool stuff, we're looking for you. So get in touch, send us your resume, and let's talk. Uh, but get to get back into a little bit of news here, uh, Jacob, let's talk about El Salvador. Yeah. <clears throat> obviously, obviously, El Salvador is big in the crypto news lately because of this uh, pending transition to the country becoming a, uh, taking Bitcoin as legal, as legal currency. But you were telling me before we started recording, that's not exactly what's going to happen in practice, is it? What's, what's the yeah. Yeah. So I, I saw this when I was looking at market news, this was earlier this week around Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, it was making headlines that um, El Salvador's president had come on the record saying that you are not uh, the the businesses and stores in El Salvador are not required to accept Bitcoin, which is kind of contradictory to what was written in the law that he passed. Is that it was required all all businesses had to adopt Bitcoin and had to accept it. And then now he's going on the record saying that's not true. I strongly advise you to accept Bitcoin. Your business might fail if you don't accept Bitcoin, and you're not a part of the future if you don't accept Bitcoin. But I'm not going to. I'm saying it's not required. So it's. I don't know if he was facing backlash for doing this, or it was too hard to implement to make all to force all businesses to accept crypto. I don't know what it was, but it seems like now he's saying I'm strongly advising you to accept Bitcoin because it it'll help your business. You're going to be a part of the future, but you don't have to. Yeah, yeah. 
as we were doing a little bit of research before beginning recording, uh, we learned that uh, uh, El Salvador President Nayib Bukele, Bukele, excuse me, is Bukele, right? Yes, Bukele. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nayib Bukele, his, uh, the name of his political party is Nuevas Ideas, literally new ideas. So it's, uh, it seems to be a little bit, it's rather on the nose that a guy with yep. a, uh, coming from a political party called New Ideas is, uh, is, is, I don't know, carrying a Bitcoin torch for his country. Um, but I, if I can put on my speculation hat for a minute and kind of analyze some of this news, I, I, think, I, I think we might, <laughs> we're headed for an interesting situation in El Salvador. Um, obviously, some of the first critiques that people throw at decentralized cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin is that, oh, it's just for crime. It's just the criminals who are using this. Obviously, we know that's not true in practice, but it doesn't change the fact that largely anonymous, largely untraceable money is very useful and interesting if you're a criminal. Yeah. Uh, but I want to call your attention to, and maybe I'll, I can go ahead and share my screen. Let's get that. Yeah, for sure. I want to call everybody's attention uh, to, where is the share screen button? Goodness gracious. There it is. I want to call everybody's attention to this article on insightcrime.org. This, is, this comes from October 2020. The headline is The El Salvador President's Informal Pact with Gangs. So what does this actually mean? Well, according to this report, uh, government representatives met with gang members both in and out of prison in order to earn trust with each other and trade favors. And among those favors was political access uh, for Bukele's political party. So we have a president with uh, who's, who's documented for being associated with criminals, maybe not him directly, but certainly people in his own political party. So I don't know what's going to happen. Absolutely no one knows what's going to happen. I'm just going to say this smells, it smells to me a little bit. Yeah, um, a little fishy. So yeah, just, just as we're watching Jack Dorsey, we're also going to be paying attention to El Salvador. And Jacob, did you see the news that uh, Cuba is now, it seems Cuba is taking a page from El Salvador's book. Yeah, I, I just saw that. I was looking at that earlier. We gotta, That's interesting. We, we got to figure out a way to get to Cuba uh, and, and just on a Bitcoin only kind of a trip. See, see what that's like. That would be pretty Yeah, cool, we, like. we could do, vlog it for, for the Token Metrics YouTube channel is just us in Cuba trying to a day in the life in Cuba of only spending crypto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> like and subscribe, like and subscribe. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, uh, I think that wraps this episode of Engine Room. I've been Dylan. That was Jacob. Thank you for listening and watching, and uh, we'll be right back with you next week. Stay with us. <laughs>